10 tips for the older lifter. Now, this is going to be a remake of one of my very first videos on this platform. And it was a popular video, had a lot of comments and it still gets comments to this day. So I wanted to redo it with a fresh perspective, having been on YouTube now for about 18 months and uh, learning in that time how to communicate effectively to people. Nothing's really changed in my message, but I think I'm able to discuss things better and give you guys more of a contextual answer. So let's begin. Now, first thing is just to describe why I make this video. Things change. <laughs> and you know what? Things change in a, in a very vague, nondescript way. Like it's difficult to describe to a young guy, look, your body's going to change when you're older. You might pick up some injuries. It won't respond as well because everybody thinks it's not going to happen to them. And then when it does happen to them, they refuse to believe it's that time. Like we're all going to have one day where we hit our final PR. We're always going to have one day at some point where the trajectory starts to go downhill. We're all going to be there. Now we fight against that. So for every young guy, even some young YouTubers who are still in their twenties, I've heard them say, it's going to be different for me. I'm not going to get injured. My method is different <laughs> or I'll see it and I'll stop beforehand, but nobody ever does. And the reason you don't is because we all have setbacks. Even in our twenties, we pick up a niggle here. We have some bad progress. We never think it's our time to slow it down. We just think this is just another hill to conquer and you push through problem is at a certain point when you try and push through all of a sudden things aren't moving and that's when problems start to occur and in my experience it's the transition between your early 30s to your late 30s going from 30 to 40 is very humbling when it comes to your training progress and I know a lot of guys who train in a very sort of power lifter or high intensity kind of way a lot of them just stop lifting because they can't train the way they use. I had to go through a massive evolution of my training to change to where I am now, which allows me to train in a way which is still productive. I can still gain, but it's a lot safer than what I used to do because the body changes. As I say, it's one of those things which makes this video applicable for everyone, not just the older guys, but for the younger guys too. Nobody wins against father time, but that doesn't mean your training is over. And some of the changes I'm going to talk about in this video are things which even the younger guys should pay attention to. And for the older guys, you need to listen to this. So the first thing is the body changes. Second thing is people get stubborn. That's just older people in general. This is very well documented. People get stubborn and they become unwilling to learn. Now that is going to cause a problem because the body changes and the type of stuff you do in your twenties might not work in your thirties or beyond. I get countless inquiries from guys who will start off a conversation by saying, I've been doing the same thing that I did in my twenties and now I'm in my thirties and it doesn't work. I've got a belly. I don't recover very well. I'm getting injured. What's going on Faz? What's changed? And the sad truth of the matter is the only reason, the only reason what worked for them previously did work wasn't because they were doing anything particularly right. It was because they were young. Congratulations. Your training approach worked because you were young. That's it. And now that's being exposed. You never knew what you were doing in the first place. And that's why you're hurt, fat and injured right now. So I think the second thing that happens when people are older is they get stubborn. Now I'm going to share with you 10 tips. And so the video doesn't take forever. I'm going to try and run through them pretty quickly. So let's begin. First thing is sets and reps. And I, I covered this in the first video. My initial advice was to try and focus on using sets across to ensure you're getting some sub maximal lifting. So my example I gave previously was if you have a weight, try and do it for eight, 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 rather than rep drop offs. So rather than doing say 12 reps, nine reps and six reps do eight, eight, eight. So that ensures the first two sets are sub max. Now I say that because it's a way of auto-regulating intensity. 
without really having to think about it. And that can be useful because it relates back to the intro to this video. People get stubborn. If I say RAR or RPE to some people, because they can be a bit stubborn, they just reject it and they get very angry or they go and sit in the corner, rocking to themselves, talking about the good old days and they refuse to learn. So having set set up in this way ensures some sets or sub maximal. So that's why it's generally pretty good advice. If this is your goal, you can use RAR and RPE, but again, going off the audience, that might not be the best message. My main message is for people to be in control. Okay. Lift without pain and be in control. And I also think when it comes to repetition range, it should be appropriate for the lift. Sometimes lower reps work better for the compounds. It allows you to, they allow you to hold your body position better. So you might be better able to control the rigidity of the core, the bracing in a squat and a deadlift if you only had to do it for five or six reps. Higher reps are generally better because they mean lifting with less weight. But if you're not able to maintain form for higher reps, then go lower. Okay. And just finally, a lot of this can change based on strength levels. So whether you're a beginner or you're advanced, things tend to have to be a little bit safer if you are very advanced and you're getting older. Right. Next up, don't baby yourself. Okay. You're old, you're not dead. And I think big advice here is training the legs and the core very hard. And that means actually loading them with full range of motion and good form squats and squat variations, deadlifts and hip hinges, and also heavy loadable ab exercises are crucial. Don't shy away from them. And also don't rely just on high rep core workouts. I know Rocky did it, but it's not the way forward. Next is use the barbell sparingly. I think it's probably better to limit the barbell, use it sparingly and try to fill in with variations. My wizard routine is based around variations of different kinds, repetition ranges, exercises, rest periods, all that stuff. So variety helps a lot. Next is fatigue management. Now the original slide said deloads, but uh, similar to similar to RAR and RPE, some people hear the word deload and they get very angry and they, they go back in the corner and start rocking back and forth, talking about the good old days. So for those guys, listen, just do some form of fatigue management, whether you're doing deloads, whether you're having some easy weeks some hard weeks, have something. So you're not trying to pound it every single day. I've heard the argument that you can allow life to deload you, but I'm going to hope that by that age, your life is a little more settled <laughs> that every 10 weeks it's not thrown upside down and you have to take a week off the gym perhaps do it a bit more proactively. So yeah, somehow manage your fatigue. Deloading is a simple idiot proof way of doing things. And there are more complicated ways. Next is form. Now I think this is one where, yeah, people can get unstuck because they do get stubborn. Okay. And I think a lot of times, some of the older guys in the gym, they have a tendency to be quite loose with the form from what I've seen anyway. They don't really want to relearn some good form. They want to just carry on doing what they were doing when they were younger. I think part of the problem is with some of these guys, they don't actually believe that they can gain muscle. They're just in there mostly for some exercise and their mental health. And so they just, they think it doesn't really matter what they do. So they get this sort of cathartic release from lifting heavy loads and that lends itself to this sort of stubbornness. I think that's my sort of pop psychology method of interpreting what some of these guys do. I don't think they really believe that they can train and gain. So they just go in, throw some weights around and just fall under the keep it simple banner. But I think you can do more. Next is keep progression honest. I think you should still push for progression. And it's also very important as you get older, you should continue to try and progress. You can still get very strong. You can still do things in the right way. But I would also warn you at this point, you've got to try and keep that progression honest. So joint and ligament strength is one of the things which is, it's more fragile as you get older. The joints and ligaments do tend to lose strength, but also 
the recovery tends to be a lot more fragile as well. So yeah, do progress, do add some weight to the bar, but keep the weight increment small. And perhaps every now and again, just add reps or just mix, clean the reps up, really own the weight before you move on. Don't feel like it always has to be adding weight to the bar. Slow it down. Next thing is stay in control. This is related to the last point, but this is more about rep speed. So I absolutely cringe when I see older lifters who are nursing injuries, for one, and refuse to deload, and the form is horrible, and they're in no control of the weight. They just swing it up and down. And again, I think it boils back to my point of, I think a lot of these guys don't actually believe they can change their bodies. I think they're just in there just to get their heart rate up, which is fine, but you can do more. And I think ultimately, if you're doing all those things and you're getting injured, it's a clear sign that you need to be a bit more intelligent in your approach. I think that's fair. Next is volume and intensity should be balanced. Now, in the previous video, I suggested that volume should be on the higher end. Now, I think there's some nuance here because I'm not suggesting anyone do a high volume workout, but equally speaking, I'm not saying everyone do a low volume workout either. I think it should be balanced. And I think one of the problems that I see with a lot of the older guys is they tend to go in with a very minimalistic mindset. Part of that probably comes from starting strengths and strong lifts. But another part of that comes from just trying to do the whole power building approach. Try to have a balance. Lift with great form. Try and do a moderate amount of volume. The whole 10 to 20 sets per week is pretty good. 10 to 20 sets per body part per week is pretty good. It's just a pretty good recommendation. And in doing that, you can ensure you don't have to just go balls to the wall on every set. You can pull back a little bit, make sure you're lifting safe. You're not in that sort of berserker mode. It's unnecessary. Next, stay active. Now, my original recommendation was to do your cardio. I'm not as sure whether I specifically would like people to do cardio. I think you should do what you can do safely. And that's probably the best bottom line. If you like playing badminton and you're used to it, go for it. But if you've never played badminton before and you decide, okay, you know, what, I've hit 40, so I'm going to start badminton now. Your body might not be used to it and you might pick up injuries. So I would rather see a lifetime lifter just lift more. You know, that's okay. Like I go to the gym six days a week and it's not because six days is better than four. It's because I want to do something every day. And so lifting for me is safe. It's a safe activity. I've done it my whole life. If I was to take up biking or tennis or something like that, or even jogging, my risk of injury would be that much higher than if I just stayed in the gym. And then I just balance the volume out throughout the week so that I'm not overdoing it. Just sensible stuff, sensible stuff. So my goal is for people to stay active. Now, if you enjoy having a mix of strength training and cardio, great, do it. But I think you have to, especially as you get older, you have to really warn, you have to really fight against inactivity. Because as we get older, we naturally slow down a little bit and you have to fight against that. So yeah, just try and stay active. Do what you enjoy and what is safe for you, but try and do it every day if you can. Next, and this is the final one of the 10, stay informed about your health. I know guys who are in their 40s and 50s who have never got blood work done. For me, that's crazy. I think that's a bit, it's nuts. These are family men. And uh, part of that is the thinking that I'm fine. Nothing's majorly gone wrong. So I'm sure I'll be okay. The thing is, you don't need to wait until something breaks to get yourself checked out. It's easier to fix something before you break. So that's the end of the tips for the older lifter. As you can guess, these also apply to the younger lifter as well. And my opinion is you should always try and get these things in place before your body starts to become less sturdy. I'll say it like that because it does. And I don't think it's something which anyone really appreciates in the twenties because you've got no frame of reference. So the body changes in your thirties, it changes in your forties. But if you're prepared for it, if you start thinking in your thirties, you know what, I've got to make some changes. You'll be that much better equipped in your forties and your fifties. And hopefully you can ward off any major problems, but yeah, it's coming for everyone. 
it doesn't mean that's the end of your end of your days though you can do plenty to lift healthy and successfully for the rest of your life so i'm going to call it there hope you guys are all well to support my work you can like this video you can subscribe you can hit the bell notification for extra sort of interactions with me there's my patreon feel free to jump on there i'm gonna be turning the patreon into a weekly q a thing at some point which will work well with my discord so yeah jump on there if you want to support or got a range of ebooks coaching inquiries down in the uh, in the comment in the uh, in the description as well so yeah i will speak to you guys next time take care